Oh, hello. Yep. Tell us yeah. your name, please. Kevin Rafferty. And you are? I am a uh, <laughs> concept writer, director, designer for Walt Disney Imagineering. And so you worked on Toy Story? I Mania, sure did, of yes. Um, can you tell us about Toy Story Mania from an Imagineering perspective? Right. It is, Toy Story Mania is, um, it's, it raises the bar as far as, as the next generation um, game uh, ride experience for the entire family. What we did was we mixed the Toy Story characters with the traditional games that you see on any Midway or Carnival uh, around the country, and we put them together to create the first ride-through Midway game experience ever. Now, you didn't just bring the ride here, but you also kind of changed the area. Can you talk about Pixar Studios? Right. Now, Pixar Studios is a result of, you know, this idea was first conceived for Disney's California Adventure at, at the Midway, uh, at the at the Paradise Pier area, and along the boardwalk, and that's what kind of inspired the idea for this attraction. And management liked it so much that they wanted it to be put in Florida as well. And the great thing that happened in Florida, though, is in California, it is a beautiful turn-of-the-century um, kind of pier-side uh, facility that you go through. Here, you get to shrink to the size of a toy a lot sooner than going on the attraction, and you get to step through Andy's room. And of course, everybody knows that when Andy's away, the toys will, pl will play, and we get to get immersed into that world right away. Now, being a, a, a video game, of course, uh -huh. I presume there's a lot of software involved. Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know the games, the games look relatively simple when you're playing them, but you wouldn't believe the technology that's behind the scenes. I mean, if you think about all the guests in there and they're playing with their spring action shooters and they're they're launching their darts or their rings or their baseballs at targets, each one of those actions is a real-time kind of thing. And so there's a lot of uh, computer power going on in this attraction. Being a programmer, I have some idea. I <laughs> yeah. you guys a lot. Thank you. Um, being software and being a video, is there any difference as you go through each time, or is it essentially the same game every time you ride over it? No, that's a, that's a really good question. The games themselves are the same. Ham and Eggs and, and Bo Peep's Balloon Toss, the games themselves are the same, but each and every time you go through, you're going to get a different score, you're going to see different things, there are lots of little surprises and hidden Easter eggs that you'll come upon, and whether you're a gamer or, or somebody that doesn't know anything about games and doesn't, doesn't want to play the games, we've discovered in our playtesting here that, that the folks that are not gamers have had so much fun, and the gamers themselves have discovered so many secrets every time they've, they've come through, that what's been great is, you. Uh, the other day I saw a, a grandmother with a little grandchild going through the attraction, and they were both having a great time together. So, only at Disney, right? It was just really great. It was really magical. Being a game, and with those little differences each time, do you think it's going to have a very high repeat? Exactly? I think it will, because I think it's pretty safe to say that every time you go through, you're going to get a different score, you're going to have a different experience, um, you're going to go through the attraction in a different way, because depending on where you sit in the little carnival trams, you're going to get a different point of view, and uh, and that's part of the fun is, you know, not only is it the gameplay that's fun, but those carnival trams are a blast to ride on, you know, when you, when you go from game to game, and those things spin around, and it's just really fun. I know um, Kathy has had a chance to ride it, a few other people uh -huh. have had some good feedback on it so far. Seems, seems that way, yeah, people really seem to enjoy it, and you know, that's, for me, that's the best part of it, I mean, it's, it's taken us three years to develop this, and to invent new technologies, and a lot of new things to get into this, but it all boils down to days like today, where guests experience it for the first time, and they come off, and they're having a great time, and they're laughing, and it just fills me with so much joy, it's just, it's so great. And uh, what's your personal favorite part of the attraction? You know, I I love the games. I really do. I love being immersed into that alternate universe of the toys in their world. But my personal favorite part of the attraction is Mr. Potato Head. I should have asked about him. Talk about Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Mr. Potato Head, he's he's only about five feet tall, but, but he's a giant in the world of audio animatronic figures. He really is, because he is stuffed with so much new technology um, that enables him to, to look at the guests that he's talking to and make them feel like he's, he's really talking to them, which he is. And he's the first character we've ever done that can actually take his ear off and, and snap it back in place. And he's the first attraction-based character that we've ever designed that that will be out in front of an attraction before you uh, uh, experience the main attraction itself and carry a show. He sings, he dances, he interacts with guests, he knows a lot about them, he takes on any question, and he's Mr. Potato Head, and he's, he's just a blast. It's like the software in the game, I'm guessing taking the ear off and on is a lot harder than it looks. Well, let me just say that when we first pitched the idea to our animation production crew, the folks that were actually going to design and build him, there were a lot of stunned faces.
faces in the room that day. But what's great about it is, you know, from, from the creative concept side is where I'm at. It's really fun to create and, and develop um, the ideas for the stories and the attractions because we know that there are people, other disciplines in Imagineering, that will figure out how to pull all this stuff off. And they figured out how to pull the ear off, literally, and, and so you know that somehow it'll happen. So, yeah, there were a lot of new technologies that were invented specifically for this attraction. For the hardcore gamers out there, so right. if you're an insider, do you have any tips for them? Well, there are lots of tips. Um, you know, I mean, what we've been saying is, you know, you can follow the trajectory of the, of the balls or the rings or the darts. You know, the, the higher you, you aim, the farther they go. But, but look for the smaller targets and look for the things. I'll give you an example. Like in Bo Peep's balloon pop, if you, if you pop all the balloons that are up by the sun, you know, you can change the weather and you can get more, more points. And if, and if you pop one of the balloons that's a flower, a little balloon bee will come out, which will be worth more points. So, so the more of the more difficult, farther away targets you hit, the more score you're going to get. The last question is a personal one. What's your, what's your high score? My high score? Well, compared to most high scores of folks that have been through here, it's not so great, but my high score is about 174, which for me is pretty darn good. But you know why? It's because I'm so busy just looking around at the wonder and the splendor of this whole thing and, and not so much getting into the game as much as, as I can't believe it's finally here and it's finally open and it's working and everybody's enjoying it. So. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you.